Hi everybody, it's Bear with BearIndependent.com in today for RefugeMedical.com. Today in our ongoing series about the March algorithm and TCCC, we're talking about tourniquets. This is episode two. We're going to talk about uh, the different types of tourniquets, about the three most prevalent tourniquets that are out there, why they matter, how to stage them, how to apply them. So, if you want to come in here, Mr. Cameraman, this is a Cat Gen 7 tourniquet, okay? When you get a cat tourniquet, it comes in plastic like this. I'm gonna show you how to stage it. So we're gonna, it does you no good to keep this in the plastic. The plastic is for shipping reasons only, it's to keep them clean. And you're gonna see, we're gonna lose time here, which is super important as we stage this tourniquet. So we wanna have our stuff pre-staged and ready to go so that we don't have to mess around when we need this, because if we need a tourniquet, we're dealing with a critical bleed. So it comes like this. We're gonna open it up. We're gonna take this red tab right here. We're gonna fold it over about an inch and a half, two inches long. The reason for that, the red tab is designed to draw your eye to this color, but it takes fine motor skills to get this red tab up off of the hook and loop, the Velcro. We don't want to be using fine motor skills in a stressful situation, so we fold it over like that so that we have a big old tab, rather like that, that sticks up so we can get a hold of it. We're going to pull about six to eight inches out, like so, and press it back on itself. Okay. Now, this is the buckle here. This is the windlass. This is a windlass tourniquet. This is the C-clip, and inside of here is a Kevlar band. And when we turn this windlass, this Kevlar band constricts. It actually squeezes the artery, the bleeding vessel, inside the musculature against the bone so that it pinches off the bleeding vessel so that you stop the critical bleed. So this inner band is what's doing the constriction. It's made of Kevlar. This is a genuine cat tourniquet, by the way. Okay, and then this is the time tab. Same thing with that fine motor skill. We're gonna take the time tab, pull it off, and put it on at an angle with a little bit overhanging like so. That I can get my hands on that in a stressful situation where it may be dark, I probably will have bodily fluids on my hands, high stress. It takes a lot less um, fine motor skills to pull that than it does to try and peel this off of there under stress. So at an angle, about a 45 degree angle with a little bit sticking up off the top. Now we're gonna fold up. We're gonna fold up at the buckle. Then we're gonna fold back down on ourself like that. And that's a staged tourniquet. The reason for that is in this configuration, I can grab this and with one hand, slide this over and go to work. Now, our British friends call these tourniquets, tourniquets, TQs. The Committee on TCCC, the Committee on Tactical Combat Casualty Care makes recommendations on tourniquets. The two primary recommendations is a tourniquet has to be at least an inch and a half wide, which this one is an inch and a half wide, and it has to be applied with one hand. Because in many situations, when you're dealing with the wound to the extremity, you could have a mechanical failure of this extremity because of a broken bone or something, because of a bullet or a puncture wound or um, you know, a compound fracture or whatever. Two of the lives that have been saved with refuge medical kits, their hand was missing. They couldn't use this hand. So with, without using this hand, you have to be able to shake the tourniquet out, get it on, go to work, okay? So the CAT Gen 7 is a Committee on TCCC recommended tourniquet because you can apply it with one hand and it's an inch and a half wide. This has also been used 19,000 times during the global war on terror and um, it works. So a tourniquet is not the type of thing where we wanna be doing research and development in the moment because if it doesn't work, the casualty could die. 
And so this is a proven tourniquet. It's why it's the primary tourniquet that we include with all of our kits at Refuge Medical. Additionally, there's a lot of bad information. The old doctrine was life over limb. You only apply a tourniquet to save somebody's life, but they're gonna lose the limb. Well, we know from 20 years of GWAT and from TCCC and the March algorithm that that's not true. Your muscles are a completely different type of cell than your internal organs. Your internal organs can only go a few moments without blood flow before they lose oxygenation and you begin cell death. Your internal organs start to die. That's why when you experience hypovolemic shock, your body pulls all of its blood from its extremities into its core to keep your internal organs oxygenated so that you don't begin cell death of the internal organs. Your extremities, by the way, we use tourniquets on extremities, and so that's gonna be arms and legs. It's not the head or the neck, it's arms and legs. And we'll deal with junctional areas like your neck, your shoulders, your pelvic girdle, your rear end, in our third video about wound packing. We can't put a tourniquet on a junctional area. Anything that moves, any joints, these junctions, can't tourniquet it. But your extremities, that's where we're gonna use a tourniquet. So, the Cat Gen 7, staged the way that it is. The way you apply this is you go high and tight, okay? Right up onto the joint. You wanna pull towards your center line. And so we call this the rule of thumb. If you put your thumb on the C-clip, when you apply it, no matter which hand you're using, you are now oriented to be able to pull towards the center line, okay? So the rule of thumb, thumb goes on the C-clip, it goes high and tight, and you pull. When you pull down like this, you want to keep the windlass, the stick, in what we call your work area. You don't want this on the back over here where you can't get at it. You, want, you don't want it down inside of your armpit where you're going to have an interference with your chest. Right about here is where you want it, where you can get at it, where you can work at it. And as you can see, it's high, but it's not over the shoulder joint. Now, I mentioned that the tourniquet works by constricting the inner blood, the blood vessel inside of the musculature. That constriction begins with the tightening of this band, what we call the tail. So you're gonna pull down, pull around, and come all the way back around here, and come right to about this spot right here, okay? I've already got constriction. Now, I'm going to take the windlass, and I'm gonna turn. And tourniquets work when they hurt. I like to tell people it's one turn past bad words. And so when you're ready to start saying bad words, oh my golly gee willikers or whatever, it's one turn past that. So right about here, I'm not very happy. I'm gonna go one turn past that. And see that? The windlass is retained inside of the C-clip. Okay, so come around here, go inside, and it holds it there. Now, next step, the tail gets tucked inside of the C-clip like so, and then the time tab comes across here. And if you have a Sharpie, which most of our kits do, here you would write the time, the time that the tourniquet was applied. Life over limb, right? The longest known application of a tourniquet, this exact tourniquet was 18 hours from Eastern Afghanistan to Grafenbeer, Germany. And that person did not lose their limb because of the application of a tourniquet. You can keep these on safely for about eight to 10 hours. We apply tourniquets, we don't take them off. Medical professionals, a higher level of care, takes, them, takes the tourniquet off. We apply them, but we wanna mark the time here so that when they get to a higher level of care, they know when the tourniquet went on. There is something that can occur called compartment syndrome, which is outside the scope of this video. I would encourage you to come to class, refugetraining.com, where we go way deep on all of this stuff. And we do myriad reps of how to actually apply a tourniquet to yourself, to others under stress, in the dark, the whole nine, arms, legs, everything you can think of, scenario-based training, refugetraining.com. The reason, additionally, we pull this time tab across is we don't want this tail to come loose. This is important if you're on a carpeted surface. If this hook of the hook and loop of this Velcro grabs the carpet, 
and you move the casualty, this can get stuck and it can rip off. Well, this time tab, and by running the tail through the C-clip, helps retain this part of the tail so that doesn't happen. Now, go ahead and take my watch off. You can see I've already got vascularity in the back of my hand, and that's because the blood flow to this arm has been stopped. You want to check the, you can see also, I've got veins popping up right here. You want to check the radial pulse. These two fingers, not your thumb, because your thumb has its own pulse. These two fingers, there's a, a divot in between where the tendons and the blood vessel flow and the bone right here. You're going to press right in there. You're going to feel for a pulse. You should not feel a pulse. If you feel a pulse, the tourniquet's not tight enough. You do not want to feel a pulse. If there's a pulse, that means that we're still getting blood past the tourniquet down into the extremity. We want to shut the flow of blood off. Additionally, more bad old information is the concept of weeping the tourniquet every 10 to 15 minutes so you get a little bit of blood flow to oxygenate the muscle so that the muscle doesn't die. Well, as I've told you, the muscle can go hours and hours and hours without blood flow. People don't lose limbs because of tourniquets. They lose limbs because of the uh, injury that was sustained that required the use of a tourniquet in the first place, but not because of tourniquets. These are lessons that we've learned over the last 20 years in the global war on terror, TCCC, the March algorithm. So that's how you put a cat on, okay? And remember, we put them on, we don't take them off. We elevate to a higher level of care. Now, as I mentioned, this works by constricting the inner vessel against the bone structure. If you watch, watch the vascularity in the back of my hand when I pull this off. And all I'm doing is removing the tail. See that? Went away almost instantly because blood flow has been restored. That's why it's super important to police that tail so that it doesn't get released when we're moving the casualty. And by the way, there's a 100% chance we're going to move the casualty. We don't put a tourniquet on somebody and then leave them there because something bad just happened here. There was a car wreck or there was a shooting or there was an explosion or there was a mechanical amputation. We're going to move the casualty. They are going to go in an ambulance or in a pickup truck or in a helicopter or on the back of a four-wheeler or something. Buddy carry from where the problem happened to where the higher level of care is. And so we always move a casualty after we put a tourniquet on. So we wanna make sure the tourniquet doesn't come loose when we move the casualty. Now we need to reset this tourniquet, okay? If you zoom in right here, you can see the inner band is all bound up. So what we're gonna do is we're going to pop the windlass out, spin it back around like so undo this tab on the end, pull this out, and stretch like that. And you'll feel it stretch back out. Now we need to restage the tourniquet. Always keep your tourniquets staged and ready to go. Come through the buckle, fold over the last inch and a half or so, like we did before. Pull six to eight inches out, press it down on itself. Come up top here. Make sure our time tab is squared away. Windlass goes inside of the C-clip. Fold up at the buckle. Down at the C-clip. Boom. Tourniquet is staged. There is another way to stage this. If you have a bunch of these in a kit and you don't want the Velcro out so that it won't stick to stuff, you can come down here and fold up Velcro to Velcro like that. Now it makes a super tight neat little package inside of a kit, inside of a bag, inside of whatever. What I don't like about this for self-aid is that it can be a challenge to shake this out to where I need it to apply it. So for self-aid, like I said, we're gonna fold up at the buckle. And now see, we've got this smooth surface of the cat tourniquet here. And that smooth surface is not going to grab this Velcro. So when I fold the Velcro back down, it doesn't grab on anything. So when I need to shake this out to use it, boom, instantly I've got a nice loop sized to fit over an extremity. 
So that's the Cat Gen 7 tourniquet. That's how you stage it. That's how you apply it. Always restage it after you use it. And when you get a new kit, take it out of the plastic and stage your tourniquets. Next tourniquet I want to talk about is the Soft T tourniquet. This is mine, carried around in my back pocket everywhere. This requires a little bit more training, the Soft T. It's a great buddy aid tourniquet, meaning it's really great to use on somebody else. It's more difficult to use on, its, on yourself. And in fact, in uh, a lot of the literature that comes from Tactical Medical Solutions or TACMED Solutions that makes this tourniquet, they talk about this being predominantly a buddy care tourniquet using on somebody else, not necessarily using on yourself. But I'm me and I do a lot of training. So this is also a windless tourniquet. Here's the windless right here. You can see it's got a small pair of uh, C-clip right here. It's also got this triangle to retain the windlass after it's installed. Nice thing about the soft T, and one of the reasons it's preferred by emergency medical technicians, EMTs and paramedics, is that right here, this buckle comes undone. And so if we're dealing with an impinged limb, like somebody's leg is trapped in a car accident, you can go under the limb, come back around, and rehook that, just like so. You can do the same thing with the cat if you have an impinged limb, undo the tail, come under the limb, go through the buckle, pull back around, good to go. So the cat is quite capable of dealing with impinged limbs as well. And the cat is my favorite tourniquet for primary tourniquet for self-aid. If I have to use this on myself, this is the one, the Cat Gen 7, made by North American Rescue. It's the primary tourniquet in all of our kits. So back to the soft T, excellent tourniquet as well. Right here, you can see the soft tourniquet right here from Tactical Medical Solutions. We have these in the store at refugemedical.com as well. Okay, another nice feature of this is this has a significantly longer tail on it than the cat does. So if you have somebody that has large appendages, big tough guys that do a lot of lifting in the gym, or people that are overweight. This is a good tourniquet for them because it'll get around those big thighs, okay? Versus the cat, it's not quite as long. So, this works the same way in theory as the cat does, but there's a couple of nuances, a couple of caveats here. The first is, okay, rule of thumb, thumb on the C-clip, come up here. When I pull this, it doesn't automatically cinch down like the cat does. So you have to do a ratchet style like this, okay? We still wanna be cognizant to keep the windlass in our workspace where we can get at it, not on the inside of our arm, not on the outside of our arm or our leg, in our workspace. We wanna pull this down. And yes, you're gonna get tourniquet bite, by the way. You're gonna get a little bruised up from doing this. You'll have, it, it causes no major issues. It's all minor, you know, superficial. Take the windlass, and you can see again, there's an inner nylon band on this right here that runs through the windlass. This windlass is aluminum versus the cat, which is plastic. Some people say they prefer the aluminum windlass. Well, the cat has been iterated upon six times. This is the Gen 7, and up until I believe the Gen 5, they had an aluminum windlass, and what they found out was they didn't need it. This plastic is strong enough, being a legitimate cat tourniquet, which by the way, a real cat tourniquet will say cat here on the buckle, okay? It will say cat here on the windlass, and then on the back plate right here, it will say cat with the manufacturer's information and the date of production. There are lots of fakes of these out on the market, and I break them for fun in class all the time because they don't work. A real Gen 7 cat tourniquet should cost somewhere around 30 to $35. If you're finding a cat for five or 10 bucks or 15 bucks, that's not a real cat tourniquet. It's a Chinese knockoff. And you don't want to save $10 just to have somebody that you love bleed out and die. Okay, so get real equipment. Back to the soft tee. So this is a windless tourniquet. This works the same way. I'm going to spin the, spin the windless until it starts to constrict. Right here, I'm not very happy. And then I get it in the C-clip, okay? 
One of the issues with this is depending on the, look at that, a Lone Star tick right there. Die, buddy. One of the issues with this is depending on the size of the limb that we're dealing with, the size of the extremity, this windlass may not get into this triangle right here. You need to be okay with that. Right now, I definitely have constriction, but I don't necessarily want to be messing around with this right now if I'm trying to treat casualties. If you're an EMT or a licensed medical professional, you probably have more time, you're probably better at what you're doing to mess around with getting this in there like so, okay? This triangle retains that windlass. That's kind of the secondary retention there so that we don't lose tension on the tail. And that's it. That's the soft tee. And as you can see, vascularity in the back of my hand, it's working. Go ahead and check the radial pulse. Don't have one. Okay, so, and visually we should be looking as well. We want to look for a full, there's another one. Look at that, another tick. Must be springtime in Oklahoma. We want to visually check for a full stoppage of blood flow from the wound. That's what we're doing with the tourniquet. We want to completely stop the flow of blood. We want to keep as much blood inside the body as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off, lift up at the buckle here like so, pull this off. And to reset this, all I'm going to do, put the tourniquet back inside the C-clip, fold up at the buckle. Then I've got this long tail I'm gonna fold it back on top of itself like that. Make a nice, neat little package. A third one. What is going on? Gonna get some bug spray here in a minute. A nice, neat little package like so. And this is why, frankly, why I carry this one everywhere because it fits in my back pocket. It weighs nothing. These are about $40. Um, made in America, really good product. And then I'll just take a rubber band and come across here like so a few times so that it remains in a nice tight little package. This is also Committee on TCCC recommended. It's a windless tourniquet that can be applied with one hand and it's an inch and a half wide. Now, let's take a moment to talk about the RATS or the Rapid Tourniquet. I don't like the Rapid Tourniquet or the RATS Tourniquet because every time I use one in class to demonstrate, I break it. It's also not an inch and a half wide, and generally speaking, requires two hands to apply, which means it does not conform to the Committee on TCCC guidelines for what a tourniquet is. Can it stop the flow of blood? Yes. Number four, right there. Look at him. Can it stop the flow of blood? Yes, it can. Speaking of blood, look at all these blood suckers just showing up all over the place. Uh, will it reliably stop the flow of blood? For me, the answer is no, because I break the little aluminum retention clip half the time, 50% of the time I use it in class the first time, and 100% of the time I use it in class the second time. And remember, we're going to move the casualty. And I do not like that little aluminum retention clip on the brats or the rapid tourniquet. I, I do not recommend it at all. Which brings us to a product that is, it's a good product, marketed as a tourniquet. This is the SWAT T, the stretch, wrap, and tuck tourniquet. Okay, this is basically an exercise band. I'm going to open this up and show it to you. But this does not conform to the guidelines set forth by the Committee on TCCC. But it does have a lot of applications. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up, like so. I don't know why, but they smell like orange creamsicles. So I guess that's cool. And you fold this out, and it's five foot long. Okay? Five foot long. Now... The way this works, if you'll zoom in right here, Mr. Cameraman, stretch, wrap, tuck. So we start with these rectangles right here. And when we stretch these rectangles enough that they appear to be squares, we have enough tension on this to stop the flow of blood on a bleeding vessel. So for example, right here, 
they're rectangles, but if I pull until they're squares like that, that's an appropriate amount of tension that's been applied to stem the flow of a bleeding vessel. Now here's the issue with this for self-care. Watch how I put this on. Grab this end, come up here, wrap around like so, get your beard stuck in it, tuck this underneath it here like so, stretch, wrap, and tuck. Okay, vascularity in the back of my hand. It's working. A couple things I wanna point out. The first is, no tourniquet feels good, but this sucks. This hurts, like a lot. So, it's not comfortable. Why is it not comfortable? Is this an inch and a half wide? No, it's not. Okay, so that's the second point. I'm distributing that pressure over a more narrow area, which can potentially lead to nerve damage and muscle damage, which is why COT-C, Committee on T-Triple-C, recommends an inch and a half wide tourniquet. As you can see, this covers that right up, okay? So it's not an inch and a half wide. And how did I apply it? With two hands. I had to hold one end here to be able to apply it here. So for self-aid, using this on yourself, I don't recommend these at all for self-aid as a tourniquet. However, where these really shine, first of all, is they're five foot long. And so you can take this tourniquet, about like so, sharpen your knife a little bit, and cut it in half. This is a great tool for children who have small diameter limbs. Now the cat tourniquet will work on limbs down to an inch and a half in diameter. But the bigger the limb, the better it works. And so for very small children, the stretch wrap and tuck or SWAT T tourniquet works better than a windless tourniquet. Now this is a buddy aid scenario. You are rendering aid to them. They're not rendering aid to themselves, okay? So in that scenario, this is great for small kids. And so I actually carry around one of these in my back pocket as well because I have small children and several of our teammates at Refuge Medical have these cut in half and rolled up in their first aid kit just like so that if they need one for their small children, they have it ready to go. The second place that these really shine is for making improvised compression bandages. So if I have a wound that I need to apply pressure to, I'm gonna put gauze in the wound if it's a deep wound, otherwise I'm gonna put gauze over the top of it. Then I can take this and I can wrap this around and stretch it like so. And then tuck one end in like so. And now I've got compression. I've got a compression bandage on that wound. And they, they're great for that. We offer a product at Refuge Medical called an S-Mark bandage that is essentially the exact same thing as the stretch wrap and tuck tourniquet that um, you're not paying the name brand for. It's, uh, it's a medical industry standard compression bandage just like this called an S-Mark bandage and we have those at refugemedical.com. They're in several of our kits, as is the SWAT T. I'm sorry, the soft, yeah, the SWAT T. And so here's our three types of tourniquets here. We have this stretchy type here, not recommended for self-aid, great for buddy aid, great for kids. We have our soft tea tourniquet, great for buddy aid. If you're gonna use it for self-aid for yourself, you need to, tr need to train with it. And then the CAT Gen 7. CAT is Combat, combat Application Tourniquet from North American Rescue. Phenomenal for self-aid. Highly recommended for Buddy Aid as well, and the primary tourniquet that we use in all of our kits. The whole idea here, the reason we're using a tourniquet is if we have a critical bleed, which critical bleeding looks like, oh crap, bleeding. It's a lot of blood coming really fast, okay? That's indicative of an arterial bleed. It will usually be bright red, and it may be, likely is, going with the pulse of the heart, spurting out. That's not always the case, but oftentimes it is. 
So with a critical bleed in the extremity, we're going to use a tourniquet, preferably a COTC approved, Committee on TCCC approved tourniquet. It's an inch and a half wide, can be applied with one hand like so. It has a windlass. And we're gonna go high and tight. We're gonna get the tail around. We're gonna keep the windlass in our workspace. We're gonna go one turn past bad words. We're gonna pull the tail through. We're going to put the time tab on. That's how you apply a tourniquet. That's why you apply a tourniquet. You've only got approximately, the average adult has approximately five liters of blood in their body. If you lose two and a half liters of blood, you have a 50-50 chance of survival if we get you to a trauma surgeon right now. A coin toss. So we want to keep as much blood inside of the body as possible. And that five liters is based upon body weight. So children have a lot less blood in them than adults do. So that's something to consider as well. And so having some tools in your toolkit, whether it's a windlass tourniquet or a stretch wrap and tuck tourniquet, you can deal with those critical bleeds. That's the M of the March algorithm, part one of the M of the March algorithm, tourniquets. Tourniquets save lives. This has been unequivocally proven in the areas of law enforcement, EMS, uh, tactical fire, and the global war on terror militaries and law enforcement agencies around the world understand the value of having a tourniquet on you. So thank you for joining us. Again, please share this with anybody you think needs to see it. I really want to reach as many educators as we can. Um, I am tired of our children falling victim to people perpetrating evil and I will accept nothing less than excellence from our educators, from our law enforcement officers, and from myself in addressing this. And so you need training, whether it's from us or anybody else, refugetraining.com, and you need good trauma first aid kits, whether it's from us, Refuge Medical, or anybody else, you need a good kit. And the basis of a good kit is a good high quality tourniquet, preferably a Cat Gen 7 or a soft T. I appreciate you all very much. Please share this with everybody that needs to see it. If you're new here, go ahead and subscribe, ring the little bell icon. Thank you for all the support and for all the love. Bless you all. Shalom.